Viewers like you make this program possible. Support your local PBS station. Whatever the sea and the land meet is always great flavor. We are right now in the land of San Lucar de Barrameda, a beautiful town in the province of Cadiz. Today we'll fish for tuna in the Mediterranean Sea using a method that's centuries old. We'll eat some amazing crispy tapas made with tiny briny baby shrimp. We'll bring all the different kinds of sherry they make here. And I will take you to my kitchen back in Washington where I will show you how to make a beautiful sesame seer tuna with piquillo sauce and a fantastic tuna and potato tapa called Ensaladilla Rusa. I am José Andrés, and this is Made in Spain. Today I'm going to take you to Andalucía, a land where great food, great tapas, great flamenco, and even better, great people make your life very unique. And we are going to learn some amazing things about tuna. The first thing we learn an incredible tapa you can make at home. But let's go to my home so I can show you how it's done. So with this bonito, this white tuna, we're gonna make probably one of the dishes that almost you can find at every house, at every bar, all across Spain. We are making ensaladilla rusa, a potato salad like no one. So are we ready? Here what we have is all the ingredients already boiled. Carrots, potatoes, green peas, you could put some artichokes. And the most important part, obviously, the bonito. And what I'm gonna do is, right now, make sure we get this colander to make sure that we take out the excess of oil. Oh, look at how beautiful the white meat. Mm, it smells so good already. Look at this, beautiful. And we're gonna start chopping the vegetables. And the cut, actually you can do whatever you want. Me, usually I like to cut this in cubes, not too big, not too small. It's okay. Make sure that the carrot is soft. And we're gonna do the same with the potato. Actually, in this salad, the most important part probably is the potato. So we need to make sure that the proportions of potato, carrot, let's say that at least half of the ingredients should be potato, okay? And we do the same cut, kind of um, a square, all right? I think we have enough with that. So everything goes into this beautiful bowl right here. Green peas in, a little bit more. Okay, we put more, Psst, up to you. You see, this is the great thing about these kind of recipes that more or less, if I tell you, this is the perfect recipe. No, you like more carrots, you put more carrots. You like less green peas, you put less. Simple. And now, um, something that has to be in every ensaladilla rusa, boiled egg. And we get the egg and we put it in the bowl. And we can put the entire tuna inside, in little pieces like this. We can break it with the help of the fingers, okay? And I think we are ready, you and I, to make the mayonnaise right now. In a mayonnaise are three main ingredients. One, the water. The water that is in the egg white. Two, the egg yolk, right? And the third ingredient is the olive oil. Okay, what happened here is that we achieve an emulsion. Why this happened? We need to think about the olive oil like the aristocracy. The water is like the poor boy in the family. And you know what happens? That the olive oil doesn't like to be mixed with the poor people, the water. The egg yolk, we need to think like it's like the United Nations. It's the diplomat in the family. So you know what the egg yolk does? It's involving every little molecule of the oil. And the oil somehow is full. He doesn't know is in the same room with the water. That's when we achieve the emulsion. If we don't achieve the emulsion and breaks, it's because the olive oil found out that hmm, the water was around. That's what happened. All right, like this, we can get the olive oil out of the can quicker. 
And take a look at what we're going to do. Many times a mayonnaise will tell you, have the egg and start adding the olive oil slowly. Actually, hmm, we're changing this a little bit. We're going to put all the ingredients together. You'll see. What we're going to put now is a touch of acidity. We need something sour. It's going to help the entire emotion. And we're going to put a well lemon, or in this case, why not? Sherry vinegar, OK? Only a touch, a drop or two. Well, three or four, but you know what I mean. And now is the big moment. We get the hand blender like this. And we're going to put the hand blender carefully all the way to the bottom. You'll see? And we're going to start blending without moving. The blades, we want to make sure that they are in the bottom. And you know what's happening, that at the beginning, we start blending the egg. And the egg starts being mixed with the oil. And slowly, we're going to be raising the blade, the blade, until we get to the top. If everything works, uh, we should have mayonnaise at the end of this process. We made it. So, you know, now what happened is that the mayonnaise is really, really thick. So it's always very good to add a tablespoon or two of water so to make it less dense. OK? Let's go. And let's mix. We can put a lot of mayonnaise, so we can put very little. This is up to you, like this entire salad that I'm telling you. Every day can be a different dish, depending on how many ingredients you put or what ingredients you decide to leave out or leave in. You know, gets a very nice kind of puree mixed with the mayonnaise. A pinch of salt. And let's finish the presentation of this ensaladilla rusa. So to finish, we're going to get this plate right here. Um, we can use a mold, like this one. You like this one? Great. And we're going to get a spoon, and we're going to fill it three quarts, like this. And I have a magic ingredient, an ingredient that I really love to finish this ensaladilla rusa and to somehow give it a modern look. All right. The secret ingredient, huevas de trucha, trout roll. Simple. You can use salmon, you can use whatever you want, but those are so good because, you know, when you eat one and you put it between your teeth, it explodes. It's like a big explosion in your mouth. Let's go with this one. Mm. And we fill the top with this trout roll, like this. Beautiful. We can put a touch of olive oil, like this. Good. Now the only thing we need to do is to lift up the mold. And look what a very unique presentation. Mm. I'm so excited. You know what? We've been talking about Bonito, the family of the tunas, but actually in this moment, in Andalusia, right in front of, of the beautiful town of Tarifa, the tunas, the bluefin tunas, are coming into the Mediterranean. I'm guessing that you will love to see this, right? I'm going to take you. Let's go. We are right now between Africa and Spain, in front of, of the beautiful town of Tarifa. And what you see right here is what is called La Almadraba. La Almadraba is a system of nets that has been used for over 20 centuries to catch the tunas as they come into the Mediterranean. Really a traditional way of catching this amazing fish. Sometimes they catch tunas, sometimes they don't. It's a lot of sailors and a lot of families, depending on the catch of the day. But you know what? Traditional methods are going to help us to make sure that in the future, our oceans, our seas, are going to still have a lot of tuna left for us 
street. So at the end we were lucky and was one tuna in between the nets. But usually they may get 100, 200 or none. Hey, at least we go back home with one. This is the bluefin tuna. You know it, right? The bluefin tunas are probably the best tunas in the world. We are in the middle of Barbate in a very traditional restaurant. This is the Rolls Royce of tuna restaurants in the world, where tradition meets dishes from other countries, like this sashimi of tuna. Actually, I've never been to Japan, but I'm telling you, I don't think it's better tuna in Japan than this one. That's obvious. No, no. And I told you that it's many different dishes from the different parts of the tuna, gracias. But what you have here is precisely that. Dishes that are stew, dishes that are from other countries. This one, let's say, is like the cure Spanish ham, but with tuna, with a tuna loin. This is probably one of the most expensive parts. Las huevas de atún, the raw of tuna. No veas como... Mm, you know, I'm really getting inspired. Let's go back home and try to recreate the spirit of some of those dishes, yes? So let's see if we are able to recreate the same dishes we saw at El Campero. To start, I think we have a very good product, this beautiful bluefin tuna. We're gonna make a sauce with piquillo peppers. One, two, let's put three, maybe let's put four, right. Uh, like this. And now, one ingredient that you know I love. A touch of olive oil, like this. And we're gonna put two, a little bit of water to make sure that we don't have a very thick sauce. A salt, and now we can blend the whole thing. Wait, stop, stop, baby. Mm. So quick, so easy, so simple. This is the kind of cooking I love to do at home. Wow. I don't like this kind of straight sauces. It's only one dimension. We're gonna give it two dimensions. How? With a little bit more of olive oil, but this time we don't make the emulsion. So we have a broken sauce of piquillo peppers, like this. Mm. Okay, uh, one thing in this recipe already finished. Piquillo sauce. Man, this looks good. And now, we're gonna get this tuna. And we're gonna cut a couple of pieces. We're gonna cut one. Beautiful, wow. Take a look, take a look at all the fat inside. Astonishing, wow. Perfect. And now what we're gonna do is Obviously, a little bit of salt, like this. In one side and in the other. Perfect. And now we're gonna use a product I love, sesame seeds. In Spanish, we call it ajonjolí. And we're gonna use the sesame seeds. So how to make sure that every piece of tuna is very well coated with the sesame seeds. And so how we're gonna be protecting the tuna from the direct heat of the pan. All right, this is simple so far, right? Now, oil, a touch, in the pan. All right. Piece number one in the pan, beautiful. And piece number two. Mmm, already smells so good. Make sure that the oil is not way, way, way hot, okay? I love the music. When you are able to cook with music like this, Usually the dish at the end is good. All right, we are ready to turn first time. Perfect. We don't want them to be born. Great. Nice. Oh, we are ready to turn it again. 
All right, look at, already has this very nice brown color. The fat in the tuna is kind of melting. All the aromas are kind of inundating the kitchen. And I think right now is the right moment to get one or two piquillo peppers and heat them up like this. Okay, I'm gonna put one more because you asked me. One more turn and we are ready to start plating, my friends. We put the peppers in the plate like this. Great. Okay, carefully. Oh, it's so soft. It's amazing. This tuna is like an ice cream that seems is melting. See, fascinating. Oh. And now the only thing, if you want to, it's to slice the tuna in two or three pieces. Like this. Oh. Can you see inside is still raw but warm. That's the best moment to eat this belly. Wow. Wow. And now to finish this dish, the only thing, a touch of this sauce. Here and there, and we're gonna get these two very nice different red colors on the plate that is gonna make this dish even yummier. Mm. Let's put a touch of chevron. Mm, I'm very happy with this dish today. And this dish, I think, is gonna go very well with a good glass of sherry. Actually, sherry is a lot more than a drink. It's a lot of more than a wine. Actually, I can tell you that sherry somehow, it's part of the everyday life of every person in Andalusia. Let's go back to Spain to see what makes sherry so special. Sherry comes only from palomino grapes grown in the province of Cadiz. Here I'm surrounded by 40-year-old vines. Right now we are in the middle of spring, so we can see already the young grapes showing up all around the vines. These grapes are palomino grapes, the very distinctive grape in the sherry making. Even they also use another two, Pedro Jimenez and Moscatel, but we'll talk about those two in another moment. What's really distinctive about sherry is what happens inside the barrels. So wineries around the world more or less have barrels like this, but in the sherry region, this has a big meaning. Let me tell you, this is called the Solera system, and that exactly is that the new sherry comes into the top barrels, and then they keep passing the sherry to the next layer, and to the next one, and to the next one. Then the sherry is put into the bottles. You know what's been happening? That somehow the sherry we are drinking is more or less more than 100 years old. Somehow has an historical memory. And what I'm gonna show you right now is probably what makes sherry the most unique wine in the world. Take a look at this, right here on the top, is natural yeast. Well, the yeast, what it does is protecting the sherry, protecting the wine from the oxygen. You're a fast learner, Jose. <laughs> Thank you very much. So, what you are putting here is? Manzanilla. Manzanilla from San Lucar de Barrameda. Only from San Lucar. Then you have El Fino here, Fino, which is from Jerez de la Frontera, or El Puerto de Santa Maria. But then we go to a sherry that all of the sudden is a lot darker. This one is made from the Moscatel, which is the Musca grape. And this one is from Pedro Jimenez, which is a Spanish variety. And those are wines that usually are only drunk for dessert or with a good foie gras. And those ones are more for an aperitif or even myself that I love to eat it with a good paella a good fish, a good gazpacho, and forget about the aperitif. There are wine that is great with everything. You know what? I had a lot of fino and manzanilla. I'm ready for some sweet here. Let's go. Pedro Jimenez for me, and Moscatel for you. Thank you. You know, 
wine leads to celebration. And let me tell you, here in Andalusia, everything is an excuse for a great celebration. We are right now in Casa Balvino in San Lucas de Barrameda, the town of Good Manzanilla, this unique cherry that goes so well with every one of these tapas. And when you are in Andalusia, every good bar is gonna always have a good bowl of gazpacho, really good. Life is tough in Spain. This is probably the king of the tapas in Andalusia. Muchas gracias. Do you see this very thin, crispy, almost like it was a chip of a shrimp? But those shrimp are very unique. You see, very, very tiny. I think you want to see how this is made, right? As you see, a little bit of salt, onion, garlic, parsley. And this flour is very unique because it's the same flour we use for deep frying the fishes. This one is, let's say, not very refined, and that's why it's so unique to make the tortillita de camarones. And take a look at the camarones, at those tiny, briny baby shrimp that they go inside of this butter. The magic touch. Today, you only see three frying pans, but usually on the weekends, my friend Rocio here, the chef de cuisine, she has to put six pots, and they don't stop frying all day. Take a look at the simplicity of this, but at the same time, how difficult it is to make them so thin. I never in my life tasted something so crunchy and so tasty at the same time. So you know, it's rim, the sea, let me take you to the sea, right now. We are right now in Bajo de Guía, a neighborhood of San Lucas de Barrameda. And you tell me, how many places you can have? Those unique tapas bars, a very beautiful beach. For more than 150 years, they've had horse races here at low tide. Let's go right now to one of my favorite places for a snack, while we wait for the race to begin. <clears throat> What do you like? You tell me and I order it. He just got langostinos. Look at Those are cut right there, right there, where the river and the sea meet. And they are so savory, so salty, so sweet at the same time. ¿Me los hace servido? Sí, Me voy a coger dos o tres. Me los voy a preparar crudo. Ay, muy bien. I'm gonna get two or three, and I'm gonna make them raw. The rest, he's gonna boil them for me. And it's gonna be a unique tapa, I'm telling you. And now, a little bit of lemon, the olive oil, and we have the best tapa you can do anywhere. They're really good. And the same langostinos, but this time boiled with the seawater. 30 seconds in the hot water. Out after putting to ice to stop the cooking. The best is the head. <laughs> and you know, from here I can see already the first race. Let's go to the horses right now. Well, I think you and I, we had a great day in Andalusia. We fished tuna, we drank cherry. Well, I am Jose Andres, and this was Made in Spain. Adelantando que no adelantándote, el uno suma el número, número uno, pa' que el primero, pa' que con estar es suficiente. Para mí, uno más que en uno menos, sumando, sembrando, pensando en lo que voy a hacer. Uno más, pero con nombre y apellidos, tirando de la cuerda siempre hacia adelante. Ay, la, 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 la.